was on the last piece of graphs, so where you've got to actually tell me what the values are for alpha, beta, theta that they give you on the sketch. Mm -hmm. The other piece of it was the Pythagorean cost for this lesson. Oh. So for this one, they gave you the purple graph on your sketch. And asked you, if I tell you that that's a sin graph, because they have to, remember why? Because the sin shape and the cos shape are exactly the same shape. Just the one is 90 degrees moved to the left or right. Then they can fit exactly on top of each other. So I have to say, it is the sin graph. Then, you also are told, not in words, that this graph has major, what? A shift to the left or right. Let's look at the sketch. What did it do? The sin graph. It moved to the right. But I can't see what they did. You can't just estimate, but there is something else given on the sketch that told you what happened. Are you with me? Yes. So in other words, if this was negative 50, it should have been where? Where should this have been for sin? Where should this point have been for sin? So that one should have been at zero, then this one should have been at negative 90. And it's now at negative 30. So it made a 60 degree shift to the left. Right, and that's why we write oh, right. negative. Did I write that correct now? Yeah, sorry, just checking myself. So, in other words, now I know that that should have been a 60, but I couldn't say that. It wasn't given. On the sketch, they gave me this so that I can know exactly. Just one of the points of the basic mother graph. It should have been here at negative 90, but it moved 60 to the right. That's why the goals, we write negative 60. And then answer the question, please. Always good to write down the equation. And then answer the question, what was theta then? Negative 60. Are you sure? 60. Negative 60. There it is. Plus 60 is now negative 60. So theta is negative 60. If this had been a negative, if theta was positive, positive, positive 60. Check how they give it to you. It's just a catch. Now that I know that for one mark, maybe two marks, they ask me to go and sketch another one on the same graph. It happens a lot in tests. I give you a grid with one of the graphs and you must sketch the other one on top of it. So the other one is now going to be the cos graph. That's why I put the mother graph over there so that you can see where I get my one, two, three, four, five points from, but it was moved a little bit to the right, left, so I'm starting over there. What this graph must make from the mother graph, I must do what? X or Y? Y, y must be added by one. So point by point, that first one there is now at two. two. That second one when it was at zero, at 90 it's now at one. Then at 180 it's now going to be at zero. Then it was at zero, now it's going to be at one. And so we carry on, but the sketch was asked from between minus 90 and positive to 70, just adhere to whatever they asked you there. All right, and then to the left. Should have been at zero for the y, now it's going to be at one. Sketch done. How many marks did they say there on that piece of paper that you got for this exam question? Oh. How many marks was that? <laughs> Sketching it was three marks. Usually it's about three marks per sketch. Then they ask me, if it is given or assumed or whatever the question says, that the two cut at those two points, could I have asked you that? Yes? They're telling me that this one here is 105. And this one here is 225. So you don't have to worry about it. They're giving it. So now everybody's answers must be the same. Then they want the answer of where is the sin graph was the purple one? Where is it bigger than the cos graph, which is the red one? So where is the purple? Meaning? Meaning? Where's the purple? Above the red one. Are oh, you looking guys? You're still not learning how to read this. 
Where's the purple above the red one? So, purple above red. Uh, 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 uh. There's where they intersect then. Purple is above red and stays above until where they intersect again and then it's the other way around. So where was purple above red? Between? 105 and? 225. Guys, that's what your A and your B for today gave us. 105 and 225. Right. Done. Include, exclude. If you unsure, exclude a numerator in this case. Then the next question was a little bit of a tricky one. Usually it's where it's like where they're equal, where the one's above the other one, where the multiplication is negative, etc. But this one asks something funny, but you have to keep in mind with all graphs. If I say use your graph to do the following, it's got to have everything to do with the original graphs. But now this looks like a whole big sum. But do you identify the red one? I'm not going to erase it again. And the purple one. What's going on there? And what are they doing here? So they're saying, take the red graph, and when you minus the what? But remember, that's y. That whole thing is equal to y. This whole thing is equal to y. So it's the red y values minus the purple y values that this gives me. So in other words, when I subtract them, the distance between them must be one and a half. And it must be the red one at the top and the purple at the bottom, because you always put the bigger one at the top, because it's bigger minus the smaller on the working here. It has to be red minus the purple. So red minus purple can only happen here and there. So in this spectrum, where would that be one and a half if you had to guess? Where would the distance between them be one and a half? There, on the y-axis, do you see that the, uh, the value there is 2? This one, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to show you now. But it looks like it could be this. If this was only minus half, but I don't know if they gave me the sketch. I didn't go work it out. If I told you to sketch it, I would want the y-intercept. I would want to know what the x-intercepts, both of them, were. Now, if you have to go and get this y-intercept, because I'm guessing, that that's going to be a half. And then the distance between them would be two and a half. Are you with me? So I want to know where the top distance minus the bottom distance is exactly one and a half. Distance here is equal to one, right? Then it gets more. Somewhere it's got to be a distance of one comma five. And there the distance was one of 2,5 and somewhere again, somewhere in the middle of that, it will be 1.5 again. So, okay, if I work out the y-intercept, I'm telling you now, this is what I wrote here. So, go to the purple one, substitute the x with a 0, and if you do that, your answer is negative a half, but that's not my answer. The answer is 1, not 1, uh, yeah, 1, 5, not 1, 5, but 2,5, the distance. Somewhere here, guess where? Six, do you think? Go on your instincts. But I can't say for sure. It looks like maybe, but then I have to go figure out what that value there is. And I'm guessing it's going to be if x is 60, the y value is going to be a half. Let's check it out. In the red graph. So in the red graph, if what, um, x is 60, Give me the answer on your calculator, could you please? And it should be one and a half. Check it out. Is it one and a half? So cos 60, close the brackets, plus one. What's the answer? Okay, so we were guessing. Because we were looking at the graph. Don't just randomly guess everything. Where do you think it's going to be exactly one and a half? Yes, it was one and a half, and therefore, the question was, solve this thing. So I want to know what this x value is. Remember, now I know that that theta was negative 60, right? But they didn't write it in there, because then you know the answer for this one. So they kept it theta, 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 but you know it's that one. So I'm solving for x. Where was 
this x where the distance between them was one and a half? At 60. And that's why it would be with three marks. Because the 60 would be with one of the marks, the other marks would be to go and establish that you want to substitute that x value with 60 and actually work it out. And so long as I could see the one and a half, I didn't write all of that in here now. So that y equal to cos 60 plus 1 was 1 and a half. So that I've got my point there of 60 and 1 and a half, and then the distance is going to be two, uh, um, sorry, 1 and a half. All right, now interesting transformation is going to happen in the following graphs as well. We were busy with um, straight lines, hyperbolas, whatever. If the x axis is shifted, we've never done that. Yes, we have, we've just not been wording it like that. If I shift the x-axis down two units, what will happen to G, which was the red graph? So the red one used to be cos x plus 1. So if you look at the red one and you take the x-axis and you shift it down two units, what's happening to the graph? It's going up two units. So it's just a way, a tricky way of asking you the question. So if you shift this purple x-axis down two units, then this shouldn't be plus one anymore, it should be plus three. Still the same cause graph, I didn't do any sorts of shape shift shifting. It's just, it has moved to up for the x-axis to move to down. It's just a way worse thing to say, x-axis shifts. So it's now going to be y equal to cos x plus Either you're going to get it or you're not. Last thing, the easiest question, and by now you have decided you don't want to do anything anymore, you're just going to carry on with the next sum. Where everybody should have gotten this one. What is the period of the original F row? Where do you see the period? Not in the front, that's the amplitude. But the period has got to do something with the x. If the x has been multiplied or divided, Otherwise, if it's been shifted left and right, the period didn't change. So it'd stay 364 if it's a sin graph. And that's that. Okay. All right, now after the graphs, we start with a heap of trick reduction formulas in, in intricate, complicated rules, 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 rules. The first one of the sums were what I call. The Pythagoras cast butterfly sums, right? So first of all, I give you information, and like you saw in the example, there's usually two sets of information. The information is, if tan theta is 4 over 3, it will also say, I don't write it here, but it will always say, no calculator. And very often, use a graph, or use a sketch. Then kids want to draw me the tan graph. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's the sketch I'm looking for. So if I want to go sketch this, I've got to make sure that I choose the correct one. Because of my sin, cos, and tan, orange, apple, orange, apple, half, half, that I know tan is opposite over adjacent. That I know tan is positive, look at it, do you see it being positive? Mm -hmm. Knowing that by cost, where is tan positive? Cost, third, and first. So which one is it? Not enough information. Unless I give you some. My boss did it! My boss did it! So I know that tan is positive. But tan can be positive on two different places. I have to give you something else. It doesn't always have to be like this one or the example from previous time. That I tell you cause is negative. You're reading it. Less than zero is negative. So cos is also negative, while tan is positive, it can only be the third quadrant. So for that, you'll get your first mark. And only this graph, I show you, you don't go like this. That's why I give you a little butterfly that you know. It's going to be one of those four options, and your angle is going to be theta. So the angle I'm talking about is going to be theta. It's actually a lot of reduction going on here. Coming from the positive x-axis up to there, being 200 or whatever degrees in the third quadrant, but you're going to reduce it to a, 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 an acute angle again. So then I've got two sides, opposite and a 
adjacent. And the opposite side is going to be 4, and the adjacent is going to be 3. But that's not right. Look at the sketch. It has to be negative. But there's no negative. But both of them must be negative. So negative and a negative will give me a positive. Nice, eh? Yes. So then I know that my x value and my y value are 3 and 4 negatives. And then r would be. Oh, you're so clever. Because again, they use the rolling triangle. They love it, guys. You must get to, to love it as well. So that your r value would be. And please don't forget to say Pythagoras. So, two, three marks for having to graph the correct places doing the Pythagoras. And then comes the question. What if they want me to find? One question, six questions, doesn't matter. I've got to go back to the graph all the time and say to find sin squared theta plus one. All I need to go and read off of the graph is sin theta. Remember, you were told in grade 10, we don't write sin theta squared like that. Because then the square is actually by the angle. We write it either like that, but we're too lazy to do that much. We'd rather write the sin theta and the square there in the middle. But it means you've got to go do sin and square it. Find sin on the sketch. Sin is the? O over H, opposite of our hypotenuse, so that would give me negative 4 over 5, which obviously, obviously would be worth more. And then plus 1, minus 6 square root. What do you like to write up here? And give me an answer, please, for that. Uh, 16 over 25. 40, 41, say again? 41 over 25. 41 over 25. Just what if the calculator is, you don't mess with it. Question would be worth for the quadrant, for the correct placing of everything, for the Pythagoras, two, maybe three marks. For substitution and for the answer, so classically, this Pythagoras cost butterfly sum would be worth about four or five marks. And that's your first real piece of trick. And you've done it last year, just more get complicated now and we'll go on with more difficult stuff next time. Yeah?